Hey, you guys, I want to give you some tips from our winning your wedding day planning journal. And today is all about how to create your budget. So pretty much no one sticks to that budget. Like no, no one is built with this innate ability to do that when it comes to wedding budgets. It is no different. So one of the things that we tried really hard to do as planners is help our clients make sure that we establish a budget ahead of time. And then we will reverse build their priorities to make sure that all of the vendors fit into their budget. So while you're doing this by yourself, we want to make sure that there's some key things that you go over before you dive in. First point, talk to your fiance. You guys are getting married. You need to have a conversation about this. Like, you know, this is probably your first really big financial decision together, and you need to talk about it. So make sure you sit down, have a conversation. How much money do you think you can spend on this? How much do you want to spend on this? Are you guys going to be saving up and paying for it yourselves? Are you getting money gifted from family members? However it's happening, you guys need to come up with a solid number of how much you want to spend on your wedding and make sure it's realistic. Everybody thinks that you just throw the W word in stuff front of something and the price gets checked up and that's that maybe used to be a thing, but that's not the case anymore. Now like services cost money and we do not see a lot of inflated services. Like the services that you're typically gonna find at least in our area, are geared really well towards the amount of hours that are getting put into each service, right? And a lot of services are, you get what you pay for. Not saying that that doesn't mean that there aren't budget-friendly vendors out there. I'm just saying you need to be careful about shopping for vendors strictly on budget. So that's why it's really important to prioritize, right? If your number one priority is the party, then you want to make sure that you prioritize the music. If your number one priority is the meal and you want to have the best food, then obviously you're, you need to put all of your money towards the caterer, not all of your money, but the majority of your money towards the caterer, right? So that's why it's really important to know how much money you're going to spend first and then be able to talk to your fiance about what your priorities are going to be for the day and then go from there. You guys, be realistic. You can't have a 200-person wedding and have a $5,000 budget. Like, it's just not realistic, right? So... If you're trying to be budget conscious, the first thing that you need to consider is your guest count, right? So if you have a giant family, you're like, no chance of I cutting anybody out of this guest list, then you need to make sure that you are flexible with what type of food you're going to have, right? You might have something that is a little bit easier to do, like um, like a taco bar or a barbecue and all that stuff can still look very presentable and you know, make sure that it's super classy and well done. Um, but it's significantly cheaper than, you know, having a carving station and having three different types of mac and cheese. So if that is a consideration for you guys, you just need to make sure that you're realistic about it. Because this point is super, super important to me because I really like to make sure that our couples are empowered to be the individuals that they are coming together and that their wedding day is about the two of you, right? right? Like your wedding day needs to be about you two. And when it comes to the budget, a lot of couples are super, super blessed and that their families are able to contribute financially. Um, what is heartbreaking for me to see is that when a family member contributes and then decides that that contribution automatically gives them the right to make decisions in the wedding. And that's not the case. That choice is up to you. So if you are getting a financial contribution from a member of your family and you want them to be a part of the decision-making process, that's 100% okay because it's your day. But just because you got money from your parents or your fiance's parents does not give them the right to make decisions above you. So just make sure that you're setting realistic boundaries with where the money's coming from and how those decisions are being made and things will run a lot smoother. So remember I said, everybody goes over budget. So our clients don't because we make sure they stay in budget, but everyone who we see and in their own wedding typically almost always goes over budget. So you want to plan a 10% buffer at least because there's going to be things that you don't think about, right? Like there's a ton of little stuff that is going to come up. You're like, oh my God, I didn't think about that. And it's going to add to the budget, right? And on that note, you need to make sure when you're planning for the budget, you're including things like what you're wearing, the dress, the suit, the accessories. If you're buying your bridal party gifts, like all that stuff adds up and it rolls into the budget. Um, and you just need to be in consideration of that. So having an extra buffer 
um, just a couple thousand dollars or 10% of, you know, whatever it is that you think your budget's going to be is usually a pretty safe zone. So we have a really great budget tool that we use with our clients and is also in the winning your wedding planning journal that we have. It comes with some really great accessory tools and this budget tool is one of them. Um, but if you don't have access to those, um, definitely Google average wedding vendor percentages of your budget in your area. Um, cause this is very different for where you're at. Like California is different from Missouri is different from North Carolina is different from Florida. Right. So, um, you just want to make sure that you're taking those things into consideration when you're planning your budget. And those things are not set in stone. They're not black and white, but they give you a really good way to start that, oh, my DJ should be X percent of my budget and my planner should be X percent of my budget. My photographer should be this percent of my budget. And um, so it's just a good place to start to kind of help splitting things up as you're getting started. So if budget is totally blowing your mind and you really need some help on that, um, definitely dive into our planning resources at bestplanningjournal.com. And if you need more help than that, reach out to us. And if there's anything we can do, we can help you virtually or we can help you in person. Um, there's lots of options for you to make sure that this does not stress you out because that is not what we want for a wedding day. So smash that link down in our comments or over in the bio and we'll see you there.